Good morning. It must be time to start talking because the keto cuckoo has just gone off. Hi, my name is Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey, and I talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic diet and how others might be able to lose weight, improve their health, and regain control of their lives. Welcome. Thank you for allowing me in to your world. Um, I'm going to make sure that people can hear me every week. It's a challenge to make sure technology has not done us wrong. So if that someone could acknowledge that they can see and hear me, I would appreciate it. Takes a second. I'm just going to keep talking until, um, oh crud. Oh crud. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Good. I'll tell you. As I've said before, I would fire my, you know, my tech person, except I'd have to lay myself off. Same thing with my copy editor and my photographer and my video editor. Anyway, nice and clear. Coolio, thank you for allowing me here. Today's topic is about what makes the ketogenic diet different than any other? Aren't they all, you consume less fuel than you need for your body's energy and you will lose weight? That's, that's, that can't, that is a JIT statement thing. Pretty much can be said. Um, there are several things that make the ketogenic diet different. For those of you who don't know, the ketogenic diet in its broadest sense and that formula for which most of us find success, with which most of us find success is Keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer a day total, not net. Eat fatty sources of protein, and that just means eat the, the, the yolks with the eggs, the poultry with the skin, the fat with the chuck roast, the fat with the ribeye, the pork chops with the fat. If it has fat, eat it. The protein source. Don't eat if you're not hungry and stop when you're satiated. No, don't stop when you're full. Stop when you're satiated. That'll pretty much work. There is no discussion of pie charts or percentages or the M word or grams of fat or grams of protein. The protocol is 20 grams of carbohydrate a day or fewer. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. So what's so magical about that? There are a few things. One is that let's just, let's just take off the table. The fact that many people, including myself, have found wonderful actual health benefits. Blood sugar, if it's an issue for you, is reduced. If you're doing this and you're on medication, if you're going to start doing this and you're on medication for blood sugar, do this with a doctor's supervision because you could actually have your blood sugar drop too much. But blood sugar reduced, A1C levels reduced, acid reflux symptoms gone. People come off of medications for acid reflux, for irritable bowel syndrome, joint pain gone, myriad health benefits that's just from the food. So, but let's take that off the table. Okay, so let's take it at face value that those things will happen. There are those who will say, you know, what's all the talk about keto? It really is just eating less. So folks, if you would just eat less food, You'll lose weight anyway. Yes, there are many ways to consume less energy. And I don't like to use the calorie word because it's very charged, right? We can become hyper-focused on calories. So I just refer to it as, as fuel and energy needs. What you're putting in is the fuel or what you've got stored on you is fuel. And your energy needs are what they are. Your body needs energy. When you reduce your carbohydrate in intake sufficiently for your body, your body will stop producing glucose for fuel and will start looking to burning fat or ketones for fuel. That's what it is. It's a fat burning diet. That's all it is. You're burning fat for fuel rather than glucose. Not a weight loss diet. So what makes it different? In my experience, those people who say, come on, it's really just another way, you know, it's just eating, aren't you ultimately just eating less food? Yes, you are ultimately eating less food. 
So what's the big deal? You eat less food if you're successful on Weight Watchers. You eat less food if you're successful on Jenny Craig. You eat less food if you're successful going to the gym six days a week and you're burning more. So, you know, people lost weight on The Biggest Loser. But I don't know how happy they were about it. The difference here is you're, you're consuming less food because when you're burning fat for fuel and, the, and the, this luscious regime of, of food that you do eat is so satiating and nutritious, you're eating less food sometimes without even noticing. Whereas on other programs, sometimes all you do is think about food. This way you lose without hunger. Imagine that. What other diet says, do this, you'll lose weight and you'll never feel hungry? Or if the hunger that you experience is so different and so tolerable <laughs> compared to <coughs> really just restricting your fuel intake, muscling it down. And, and I've done that. We've all done that. I had my year of the triathlons where I trained for and participated in four sprint level triathlons and I was a hundred pounds heavier. Over the course of six months, I lost 11 pounds, everything hurt, and all I did was think about food. That is one of the differences. Forget about the internal healing that goes along with this. Forget about the mental healing that goes along with this because many people's moods are regulated. I know my, my moods have improved and become very stable where they weren't before. You do eat less food because you want less food. You need less food. The food is very nutritious. Your brain is not calling for you to give it another dose of sugar every two and a half or three hours like it does when you're burning sugar for fuel, burning glucose for fuel. Your brain is happy to burn ketones for fuel. It still burns a little bit of glucose, but your body can make what it needs, essentially. So that is one of the big things. And I just saw a comment at a long one. Hey, Carrie, I had an extremely stressful week last week and managed to get through it with no panic attacks, no anxiety attacks, hard handled life with a calmness I've never had before. I'm wondering if this way of eating improves your mental clarity and state of mind. Sure does for me. I am off insulin and one pill just on metformin twice a day, still a wee high about 179 in the mornings. I've lost 25 pounds in four months. I'm at 217.8, want to lose 70 more pounds. That is the perfect representation of what I'm talking about. Yes, Carrie, who knows? You'd have to do a clinical study, I guess, of anxious people. But anecdotally, for myself, and I've heard from too many people to not believe that this is true. Anxiety, panic attacks. There are people who've come off of psychiatric meds, who have come off of depressive medications. That's not the right word, depressive, I guess it means the medication makes you depressed. <coughs> Excuse me, and I apologize for my voice and the occasional cough. I'm coming off of a nagging upper respiratory um, virus that I've been battling in a couple of weeks. Um, and, and Colleen always likes to talk about blood sugar levels. That is true. But not everyone has issues with blood sugar. And not everyone has in problems with insulin. It's really much more beyond that. And someone asked the question, how long does it take to heal insulin resistance? I don't know that this does heal it. I don't know that if you're an insulin resistant person and you do this for a while, you're no longer insulin resistant. I don't know the answer to that question. I, it's on my list to ask the next time I see a world expert. <coughs> because, <coughs> you know, those people who say, oh, it's just about eating less and you know, any diet can do that. In my experience, those are people who have never really had a weight problem. Easy for them to say. Or they've never had an unhealthy relationship with food easy for them to say. It's kind of like people who've never had kids saying, well, when you're raising your toddler and they're pitching fit, all you have to do is just fill in the blank. Oh, if you have a rebellious teenager, all you have to do is just, you know, there is no just about it when you're raising kids. But people who've never had children are 
some of them really feel like experts. No way. Um, Alana Claire writes, I haven't had an insulin problem, but I eat the wrong stuff, and it can still make you feel badly. You can be thin, have no insulin issues, no blood sugar issues, but still be pretty sick on the inside. You can be anxious. You can have acid reflux. You can have high triglycerides and low HDL. You really ideally want those to be in a ratio of about one to one. You can have high blood pressure and be thin. You can be depressed. Even thin people get depressed. You know, when you're a, a fat person and you're depressed, and people say, of course you're depressed. Look how fat you are. I mean, they don't say that to your face, but you know that that's, that's kind of what they're thinking. Thin people can have terrible joint pain. And many people have found it, they've been alleviated. I can't tell you how many people I've heard this time of year, happy summer, by the way. People, if you're in the northern hemisphere, we've got some folks in the southern hemisphere. Um, they get, they're out in the garden. They haven't been able to garden for a long time because it just hurt too much. And they're gardening again. has nothing to do with insulin or blood sugar. It has to do with inflammation. It has to do with... There is a myriad of stuff. But just talking about fewer calories and so you burn less, but, but also you're burning fat for fuel. As long as you're burning fat for fuel and you're not overeating the amount of fat that your body needs... By the way, there's no minimum amount of fat. I'm going to become quite brutal in the Keto After 40 with KC group. People ask, how do I get in all the fat? Uh, I'm going to start deleting the posts. I don't, I'm sorry. It's pinned all over the place. This is not minimum fat. How do I get into my calories? I'm not hungry by the end of the day. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Don't let an app or some online personality tell you what to eat. Don't let me tell you what to eat. I can tell you what worked for me. And I can tell you what people with whom I daily, every single day, all throughout the day, hear from and speak to, it's worked for many of them. Okay, so there's, there you go. How is it different? You can do this without constantly thinking of food. That liberation from thoughts of food is one of the greatest things for me, speaking, just personally speaking. Um, my best-selling swag product, T-shirts. Food is not the boss of me. And I need to get some more of those in because that is, that is true victory. When you've struggled your entire life, people who have not struggled with food can't imagine it. But when you've struggled with thoughts of food that all you can think about all day long, when am I going to eat? While you're eating, you're going to think, what am I going to eat next? And you feel tortured by it and you feel overpowered by it, and you feel victimized by it. This way of eating, for many people, helps you get your strength back. That's a, I, I don't know how else to put it. So, there you go. Um, I am going to take 30 seconds to tell, give you an update on some things. There's going to be a Go Keto with Casey meetup. The second... Monday of the month, with if somebody can help me, what day is that in July? Um, that's, I don't know what that is, the 9th maybe? I don't know, 8th or 9th, if someone will tell me what the second Monday is. Um, in Greensboro at Wine Styles at Friendly Center, wine by the glass is half price. You don't have to buy anything. There's no minimum charge. You're not going to be asked to sign up for emails or share anything that you don't want to share. It's very calm, very relaxed, very chill. We have a good time. I will put that in the events to probably later today. Um, that's the first, second Monday of the month, so whatever that is, someone, someone tell me what it is. Oh, thank you, the ninth. Appreciate that, Christy. So I'll put it in the events. If you're in the Greensboro, North Carolina area, come on down. Uh, let's make a party of it. Um, September 28th, 29th, Go Keto with Casey Rocho in Portland, Oregon. We've got Friday evening's meet and greet venue tied up. Thank you, Cindy. And we are pretty close to having the Saturday venue tied up where we had a little issue with the first one. So it's going to be fun. Lots of folks. I, I really can't wait. And I'll put that uh, as an event and also my website. It will be a ticketed event, but it'll be a lot of fun. 28th, 29th, Portland, Oregon of September. And there we go. I think that's it. Oh, and a cruise. Just tied up today. Go Keto with Casey. The Cruise, March 2019. 
I will put that up as well. March 23rd through the 29th, I think. Western Caribbean, leaving Miami, several ports of call, including Grand Cayman, Key West, Cozumel, Costa Maya, Mexico, um, something else. And all that's tied up in the in all the rates and everything over there. So that should be fun. I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, I think that's all the news that fits to print. Um, and as, um, as I said about swag, if you go to my blog, I don't sell products. I don't sell supplements. I don't sell pills. I'm not going to do that. I will never do that. You don't need to eat anything other than food, actual food, to be successful at this. There is no product that will get you where you want to be. This is just food. But having said that, in order to try to keep the lights on, because I've transitioned from a 30-year lucrative career into doing this full-time, officially as of last week, uh, amongst other things, t-shirts, blank journals, insulated grocery bags. Fun stuff. Okay. Um, and I'm going to turn now to comments. Kimmy, <laughs> Kimmy in Germany. If I swim to you because the cruise is not around, I would, Kimmy, we're going to meet. Kimmy is fantastic. Oh, Colleen, your birthday is within that week. Possibly you can make it. And there is going to be a Durham event in September 22nd. I don't know that I have permission to say anything else about it, but that'll be coming out with a, it'll, that'll be a, an event at which I'm um, speaking as, as well as other wonderful people. So, uh, but I'll let the organizers of that talk to you about that. Okay. Um, some of my patrons are here. I will give a 15-second commercial for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Gokita with Casey. There's a lot of patron-only content that I produce there. I try to do one or two, one thing for Facebook a week, and then almost nothing on YouTube anymore. Um, but I do do stuff for the patrons. They get weekday videos from me, a patron-only forum, Everything from that all the way up to patron-only live streams, to patron-only group video chats, to one-on-ones, depending on your pledge level. So there you go, patreon.com slash Casey. Any questions? I can't see anything. Everything's kind of stuck. So, Alana Claire, I'm one month away from my husband. Hopefully we'll start too. I'm one month. Not sure what that means. Oh, still trying to convince your husband. I don't know about you, I couldn't do anything to convince my husband. He didn't really ever have a weight issue. But he, and he, you know, he put on a little tiny wee bit, a little, little wee bit of weight after age 50. But he's always been quite trim. But he saw the difference in me, in my outlook on life, my energy level, my happiness level. Um, and he started it. Because he just thought, he, he overheard the lectures to which I was listening. And they just made sense to him, as they did with me, about the health benefits. So. Elsa Nieves de Patista. I was in a plateau for the past three weeks. I read that statins hinder weight loss, even may gain weight on it. So I stopped Casey taking my, so I stopped Casey taking my statin, Altravastin, a small dose, but my daughter and I are witness. I lost five pounds after nine days off of it. Wow. Of course, I can't talk to whether or not you should start or stop any medications. But my understanding is that statins have a very small portion of the population for whom they've been proven to be effective. These are people who have had a cardiac event and I think have a stint. And everyone else is it's pretty much... The, medical doctors are handing those things out like, you know, from a Pez dispenser. So good for you. Congratulations. Oh, Dory. Is Dory in the house? Dory, 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 Dory. Are you in the house? Okay, I can't see any other comments, so maybe I need to start wrapping up. Um, don't know that we have... Uh, I just can't see. I'm probably doing something wrong. Oh, Carrie Smith writes, yes, Drew Broder, I could not start my day without the wonderful morning snippets. I love having coffee with you every morning. Casey, can I tell you, I love doing them. I've, I've said this before. You know, when you, when you share an experience with someone else, a personal experience, 
or you hear about other people's experiences and then you can sometimes receive it reflected back onto you. It is very moving. It is very educational. And it helps keep me focused. Um, it's a really interesting dynamic when I'm talking into, and I can't hear anybody, and I make these videos and I upload them. But it's always first thing in the morning. I look a sight most days. And it's kind of stream of consciousness, just talk. But uh, Susie Tift, is morning snippets a Patreon thing? Yes. I think it's for $2 a pledge a month. You get every weekday, you get snippets, plus the patron-only forum, which I actually think is the better thing. I've said it many, many, many times. People pledge a Patreon not to get access to me, but to get access to each other. This has truly grown into a community of people who support each other. It's a safe place. And sometimes it's not a talk about weight or food. Sometimes it's a vent about your mother-in-law. Sometimes it's sharing a, a, a traumatic event that's gone on. And you just, you know, you just need someone to say this, I, I'm feeling awful. This thing just happened to my family or this thing just happened to my best friend or, <coughs> excuse me, or there's been a diagnosis. A truly supportive place. You know, people share, ah, I strumbled again. That's a word, in a snippet. I was trying to say struggle and stumble, talking about struggling and stumbling, and it came out strumble. So, you know, strumbles are like where you, oh, I had this issue, and I almost fell all the way down, but I didn't quite. Patron gave us a new word, full opportunity. That's when you screw up. You put your foot in your mouth, or you try something and nobody likes it. You're a flop. You flop, and then it's an opportunity to get better, from, to learn from that. So we have flop opportunities and scrumbles. It's the way life is. No one escapes it. Vicki Stein, I had a hip replacement in December, started keto mid-March 2018, and my weight loss has been slow, but I've lost a ton of inches. Wondering if my weight loss isn't, isn't slow because my body still is slow because my body's still healing. I've lost 20 since starting. I would absolutely say so. Hip replacement is no joke of a surgery. I'm sure you were under general anesthesia for a while. Your body does have to heal because you know, our bodies see that surgery as an attack. And so sending a lot of energy there to make sure everything's cool, right? Absolutely. But if you're losing inches, and won't you feel great when you're all fully back and recuperated if you're not already walking around, you'll have a new hip and a new lease on life. Congratulations. Kimmy Brendel asks, are we, are we going planking together now? Um, hey, Helena. I thought you'd be on an airplane, sister. Helena's traveling. That's another thing. We learn where everyone's, what's going on with their kids. And Jen from Minnesota posts photos of her daughter. It's great to see. I mean, you really get to know people. It's fantastic. Good morning, Jennifer. Um... So the planking thing, there's a, in, on, on the, in the forum, there's this thing about planking. And Helena's the queen of the planks now. She could do 20 seconds when she started it. What's your, uh, is it up to two minutes now, Helena? So anyway. Okay, Alana Claire writes, I have to see about the Portland meet. Yeah, I'm, uh, this weekend, when we get some things formed up, I will put it on my a website as an event. I'll post it here as an event and just let you know. September 28th and 29th, that's a Friday and a Saturday. There's a meet and greet uh, on Friday, wine and cheese type of thing. Saturday program, probably something like 9 to 3, 9.30 to 3. We're going to have fun. There might be rewards. We might have a Jeopardy game or a trivia game. It's going to be fun. All right. Anything else? Any, any challenges? Any successes to share? You know, it's not only about successes, and there are different successes. Um, you know, when people will write to me, I'm confused. I'm feeling so much better. I'm off of my acid reflux medication, and my joints don't hurt anymore. But I've only lost five pounds this month. And you, you want to reassure people, to look at what you just communicated. So where are the important things here? 
you will lose weight eventually. I mean, you'll burn body fat if you are keeping your car, if you're burning fat for fuel and not overeating dietary fat. That doesn't mean eat lean meats. It means eat the fats that come with the protein. But uh, if, you're, if you're not losing weight at the rate at which you thought you should, ask yourself, are you overeating or drinking dietary fat? Bulletproof coffee, fat bombs, getting in a minimum grams of fat a day, which is not a thing, not part of the protocol. Ask yourself fat. If you're not doing that and you feel like you should be losing weight and you're not, Ask yourself if you're simply eating more food than your body needs, keto or not. And that's the hardest part. Don't eat if you're not hungry because many of us don't know what hunger feels like. True hunger, not brain hunger. Um, Phyllis asks, is there a best time of day to check blood ketones? To my knowledge, not. It's not like checking acetoacetate, which is expressed in the urine. Um, and you're not really checking ketones in blood. You're, you're checking beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is a byproduct of burning ketones. Unlike the acetoacetate, which is expressed in the urine, that can give you a false negative if you are checking on a really full bladder and the acetoacetate has simply been diluted. So it's there, but there's so much other stuff there. Blood, not so much. It's a little bit more constant. There is some evidence, I have been told, that after extreme intense exercise you may get a higher reading by blood than before the exercise, but it's not really so much about time of day, of which I, as far as I'm concerned. And I've never experienced that. I don't test every day. I don't test all the time. I don't need to. I do recommend, I used to use the Precision Extra um, by Abbott Laboratories. The meter is perfectly fine, but the strips, they just never came down on the price of the, the ketone strips. They were just too expensive. So Keto Mojo is a very good meter. I, the meter itself actually has some good innovations that I prefer. And their strips are 99 cents instead of $2 plus each one. I don't do to this too much. But if you go to my blog, kcdurango.com, in the sidebar, if you buy a kit, not these strips, but if you buy a kit using the link that's in the sidebar, you get a 15% discount on the kit. I get a little affiliate fee, but nothing I'm going to retire on. But I do like the product. I wouldn't put it there if I didn't think. And you don't need to test if you don't want to. You can pretty much tell if you're burning fat for fuel. Your energy level goes up. Your hunger goes down. You stop thinking about food. Not only does your hunger go down, your appetite goes down, which are two different things. You know, you can, you can be perfectly full and stuffed but still have an appetite. Um, but, but in my experience, both go down. So you don't have to test. Testing, I think, is good when you're first learning what your tolerances are for different things. And we have different tolerances, okay? We are different. We're different machines, and we're not machines. We're all unique. Look at it this way. 20 grams or fewer, total not net, a day will pretty much work across the board. For most people, some people, it does need to be lower. I'm closer like 10 grams a day. Dr. Jay Wartman, a Canadian doctor, has been, I've seen him say that he's more like a 10 gram a day. Depending on your gender, your age, your level of insulin resistance, everything else, you might be able to tolerate more. Find out what you can tolerate and then go from there. It is like, you know, some people can drink three martinis and be as sober as a judge. And some people drink half a glass of wine and all of a sudden they convert into Otis from the Andy Griffith Show. We all have different tolerances for different things. So do what works for you. I don't care what you do. You shouldn't care what I do or what your neighbor does. Your mother-in-law shouldn't care what you do. Nobody gets a vote on what you eat. Do what works for you. If you're doing what doesn't work for you and you're okay with that, Mazel tov. Go for it. This is not a law. It's a nutrition protocol that many people find very helpful. So, find out what works for you. Okie dokie. Hi from Eastern Kentucky. And Linda Payne writes, I have to stay under 10 grams. Um... Avoid fake baked goods. In my experience, they make it worse. Bingo. Do what you want. 
But for me, that's more than just the ingredients. It's that thing of now eating something that got me there in the first place. For me, danger, danger foods are mashed cauliflower. It's not that the cauliflower is bad. It's that it's something that I might find myself overeating. I don't know what it triggers somewhere in my brain. Now, I have control over it. You know, if I go in forewarned, I just have to, at some point, I have to say, yeah, I know I want it. Stop eating but also, you know, fake baked goods. Most of the ingredients on those are not on the food list. Again, do what you like. I don't care. I have no dog in this hunt. And as much as I, I, I'm glad for people's different methods, you don't need to message me and let me know what works for you that I'm saying differently. It's okay. Don't need to know. Not, not to be harsh, but I don't need to know. Because my answer will be good for you. Do what works for you. Consider yourself blessed. Okay, Daryl and Yates had a blood panel done after a year and a half on keto. Sugar went up. Can't speak to that, Daryl, and that's very unusual. And were you really on keto and did you ever... Oh, 97 to 105? No. I think you would probably get a wave off. And you can have a spike in blood sugar for some reason. It, it can be... It can be stress. My glucose went up when I had the upper respiratory thing. My blood glucose went up. I'm sure it was my body fighting the virus. And I had fever. So I wouldn't worry about it. No, you know, if you're 97, then it jumps up to 172. You say, what? <coughs> I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I wouldn't worry about it. Okie dokie. All right, guys, I am going to start to wind off, and um, I'm so appreciative that you all allowed me in. I'm going to keep looking to see if anyone else's questions or comments pop up before I close off, but thanks a lot. I hope everything is safe in your world. You know, you don't have to hear too many stories to recognize how good you've got it, right? I mean, there's some... There are some different... Uh, people are dealing with stuff, and... You know, it, it can make you feel kind of shallow for the things you, you've been complaining about. I'm, I'm talking to myself. Um, stress, lack of sleep, infections can make glucose up a bit. So can hormonal fluctuations if you are a woman of a, you know, within childbearing years. Um, Vicki, hi from Victoria, British. Oh, I'm going to say something, okay? This is really random. Last year, my husband and I were re-embarking on a cruise ship in Victoria, British Columbia. We're getting back on the ship. And as we were walking on, there was a, uh, like a, a, a super large courtesy tent outside for, I'm sure it was a, you know, like the, the, this, um, the city or something had booths and vendors inside this white, you know, you've seen these, these tents. My husband and I were just about inside the fence for the ship, and a woman said, Casey, and I turned around. And she was in, had been, she's from Victoria, and she'd been working inside the tent. She'd actually asked with, I think, her niece to switch times for this, to man this booth or whatever it was. So in hopes of, for lack, I mean, I'll just say what she said, to see me. She wanted to meet me. So she did, and she told me this story. And she was, it was so uh, flattering, for one thing. But she told me a story of her husband who just had to have his leg amputated. Not for diabetes, but because he had had a, a, a motorcycle accident sometime before and it was just time to have to amputate. This woman was so kind. She took photos. She was so emotional. She said that a friend of hers had recommended that she check out my blog or my YouTube channel. And I think that friend was in Michigan or Minnesota. And that this woman who had stopped me had written me a long email, but probably at the same time that we were on the cruise. If you are hearing my voice, or you know who this woman is, please have her contact me. I never saw the email. I really want to respond to her. It was one of those moments in my life that was very touching. So, and I know I've been thinking of doing this almost every time I do a Facebook Live. So please, if you know who you are, or you know who this woman is, Please contact me or have her contact me.
Thank you. That was a really random thing, but it, you know, it's, I felt bad that I never responded to this woman's long email and she had her husband going through this. Okay. New info about keto and lipids. Who do you listen to about this? Dr. Stephen Finney. And lipids, for those of you who don't know, is just fats. And it's not even new news. It's very old news. It's super old news. Dr. Stephen Finney. Read anything he writes. Listen to any of his lectures. He's the expert. Jennifer Harris broke my ankle on an Alaska cruise and had surgery in Victoria. Spent a few more days than I had anticipated. Beautiful place. It was a beautiful city. Beautiful. Like a fairy garden. It was just gorgeous. And Jennifer, you get around a lot, sister. Okay. Erica Jewel, yes, I, I, yes, I was from Michigan at the time. Was that your friend, Erica? <gasps> Erica, thank you. Please do let her know. I felt so bad not responding to her email. I simply could never find it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. Make it a good day. I've got to get off. I'm going to, um, got to, so gotta get off. That's loaded. Um, going to have a video group chat with some patrons in just a few minutes. So make it a good day. Remember, keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Be kind to yourself. If I can do this, I promise you, to my core, you can do this. You can do this. I know you're used to being disappointed. We've been let down many times. I promise if I can do this, you can do this. I promise, I promise, I promise. Have a good day. Bye, guys.